Well, here we are, back in Stormworks after many months. Some of my favorite bugs have been patched out, and some of my favorite patches have been bugged. But the reason we're back is because we can now program. And any game you can program in is a game I plan to play. I did some stuff for Warm Up, and then I created a new version of the Warpfish. The, per the first version of the Warpfish, you could go real fast, but you couldn't really tell where you were going, and the game tended to crash. This version is much more stable. For starters, we actually have a map right here in our cockpit, so we have no problems uh, seeing where we're going. We don't have to try and constantly peer at this map to figure out where we are and what we're doing. Um, you can see our speed over here. We're kind of trundling along at a nice slow lope. As we accelerate, you can see that the map moves ahead of us. It does a forecasting, so this empty uh, triangle is uh, where it thinks we're going to be in 10 seconds. And as we go faster, we pull farther ahead. We can adjust exactly how far zoomed in or out we are and how far we are predicting by just tapping on the edges of the screen, which is handy if you're trying to, you know, fine tune it a little bit. But, you know, we're not going too slowly right now, but uh, we have a whole nother digit right here. So right now we're going about the speed of a jet. Uh, let's go ahead and punch it up. We're now going really quite fast, and you can see that we're hovering at around 15 meters below the surface. That can get a little bit obnoxious, so you do have to keep your eye on it if it starts to get out of control. Alright, so now we're trundling along at a nice stately 1200 meters a second, and those green lights mean that we are now at a safe coasting speed. A safe coasting speed means that the game has stopped spawning in anything aside from random plants and fish. So you can see the fish bouncing off our windshield. However, they did recently release a patch where they still continue to spawn in islands. So you do need to steer around islands, hence the need for the map. But it's not too challenging. Uh, just go ahead and do it. Yeah, no problems. Now, if the red light starts to flash up here, that means you're going too fast to control and you're going to be in trouble. Um, for right now, we're kind of wandering off the map, and you can see that as good as our predictions are, uh, if we can't um, see where we're going, it's not gonna it's not gonna reveal the map for us. So, if we're exploring the ocean, we may have some troubles because we can't actually see far enough ahead to avoid hitting islands. But you know, you get what you pay for, and uh, um, this was free. <laughs> We can go faster than this. There is no particular reason why this speed is absolutely required. But if you go any faster than this, you're going to destabilize, and that's a little bit rough. So what we'll do is we'll bring back on our throttle a little bit, and then we'll go to second gear. Well, we can go substantially faster than this. In the sky, our speed is limited to about 400 because we don't have any water jets, but we can still steer. Which is good, because we want to kind of just gently touch down on the surface. We do not want to hit it very hard at all. So we can go about 3,000, as long as you don't mind completely losing control. And, uh... Oh, there we go. So we've just entered into the, the deep ocean, by which I mean that when I said nothing spawned in, I was talking about the bottom of the ocean as well. And we are currently... I just turned us down to slow here so I could try and surface again. Um, we are currently... Oh! We escaped. Well, we get down to, you know, 6,000 meters below the surface, no problem. Um, and you can see that now we are basically out of control because the ship doesn't really know how to adjust to things like going vertical. It's, uh, it's pretty finicky, and that's one of the issues I've got. I still couldn't make it recover from these things via any means other than just you manually pitching it using up and down and uh, bringing back on the, on the trim quite a bit, because it is um, it has no idea what's going on right now. <laughs> and I don't really know whether this ship will work on anybody else's computer. I don't have any way to test it. If your frame rate is different from mine, then you may end up uh, not being able to run it just because it might be that uh, that changes the math calculations. You know, the, the, the exact nature of each tick might be critical to the way that I've weighted everything. So who knows, you might not get any speed out of this. We will, we will see if anybody wants to try and use it. 
Um, now this uses a wide variety of glitches. Let's go ahead and uh, take a little bit of a break here. I think that we're lighter than water, but uh, it looks like we're lighter than water, but we're also going to be upside down. How interesting. Um, I don't want to be upside down. So I'm going to try and flip us over. There we go. It automatically does the flip over. It automatically handles all that nonsense. Yep. Oh, see, it's just really, really tail heavy for some reason. Um, well, I mean, it doesn't matter whether we're upside down or not, so I guess upside down is fine. Here we are. We're in our chambers upside down. It's a beautiful place. Uh, so the way that this ship is laid out is that there are two hatches that lead out into the ocean. You don't have to worry about them sealing or not sealing. I'm using a glitch that keeps them watertight regardless as to whether they're open or closed. Even if they get damaged, they're still going to be watertight. But uh, you're not really supposed to uh, be upside down, so it's a little bit challenging to get in from that angle. There we go. Back here, we've got the rest of the ship. You know what? Let's just go ahead and return it. It doesn't doesn't cause any harm to be upside down while we're trying to be maneuvering and stuff, but it's obviously a bit of a pain in the butt when we are um, trying to go on a tour. So let's go on a tour. Here we are. All right, so now that we're right side up, this is how it looks when you actually are standing on your feet. Uh, we got some spotlights for times when you're going less than 700 meters a second. Got a beautiful screen and all that jazz. We got some outfits you can wear if you feel like going diving or not dying of cold. We got lots and lots of programming blocks. As we move back we see the primary engine bank. These are eight jet engines, four on each side, and they're rigged up with the glitch that allows them to operate internally. That glitch was patched but then it was unpatched and changed form so once again it's viable. Hooray! Who knows how long it'll stay viable. We got some, uh, some stuff back here. Water jets. These water jets are what give us most of our velocity, but they have been attempting to limit the power of the water jets. Every patch released limits the power of the water jets more because they know that this bug exists. So right now, the jet engines and the water jets produce roughly the same amount of velocity, um, whereas in the uh, first version, the water jets provided like 90% of the velocity. But they still haven't figured out the fact that they are trying to put linear limits on a quadratic equation, and so the water jets continue to be grossly overpowered at high speeds, by which I mean impossibly high speeds. The water jets fire straight into the fuel tank, because the fuel tank is uh, wrapped around this ship in a U shape. So it starts right behind these outfits and runs along the outside of the ship, and then comes along the back like so. Um, and it's all perfectly centered, so you don't have to worry about uh, anything getting off-centered as your fuel burns up. Because for some reason, fuel tanks don't get bottom-heavy. They just... Their, their, their weight goes down. This is a bed, just in case you get injured. And you're going to, because operating at high speeds will automatically injure you. These are programming blocks full of programming. We can get back out of this ship without any challenge at all. Oh, except for the fact that I screwed it up. There we are. Um, and if you look underneath, you can see that our water jets take in a lot of water to try and move our butts. And then back here, we've got our primary control surfaces. At least that's what I'd like to say. The truth is these are not our primary control surfaces. These are our um, reactive control surfaces. This inner one keeps us tilted correctly. And that is the least efficient set for keeping us tilted, in case you're wondering. And that's on purpose, because very, very small changes make a huge difference when you're going Mach 800. This one is our manual control, up-down. And then this one is our automatic stabilizer, up-down. This is our left-right control, which technically I don't even think is in use anymore. Because what we actually steer with are the water jets. They handle all of our left-right, up-down management aside from our manual up-down. There's a lot of very precise up-down that needs to happen to keep you floating at 15 uh, meters below the surface while going a billion miles a second. 
Uh, if we were to chop this thing, like so, you can see how the ship is arranged. What we've got is two heavy batteries, eight engines, and then a bevy of, of these bad boys back here. I think that's 24. Oh, no, it's only 12. It's 12. Uh, 12 of these. So that's more than enough to keep us going faster than the game can handle. Uh, and the gas tank is starting here fills in this uh, this battery compartment. The batteries are sitting in gasoline. I'm sure that's not going to be a problem. And then it runs around the back and across the U-loop, as I explained. I think it's a cute little ship. It's available for download if you feel the urge, but I don't know whether it'll run on anybody but me, uh, anybody but my, my computer, because it's pretty precisely tuned. If you do decide that you're going to tune it some more and try and get it to work, the this one is the main depth controller. I'll show you how it works. The main depth controller takes in speed, tilt, and depth, and it also calculates out how fast our depth is changing per tick. What it then does is it goes into this Lua script here, which just grabs all that all that information, finds a target height relative to our speed, uh, and then just tries to calculate out some tilts. I've left some commented out tilt adjusts in here, just in case you feel like tweaking it and seeing the sorts of things I went through. But in the end, all I really did was find uh, that we wanted to go at a specific, you know, a specific um, tilt based on how we want, you know, whether we're below or above our target height and how our ship is currently tilted. The faster we're going, the more our ship's inherent tilt matters. Now, if you're using flaps, flaps um, act differently than water jets. Water jets are much gentler, and they aren't related to speed, whereas flaps are. So with the water jets, I don't have to multiply or divide by speed. I can just use it straight up. It's quite nice. Um, down here, I've just got some coloration stuff for drawing to screens, which I, I don't really do anymore because I replaced it with the cool map system that I have. Anyway, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this look at programming. <laughs>